So, Tom, buy rating on, on both stocks, uh, I guess there's a difference here as to the level to which they are both geared to reopening. Uh, does that alter your preference between those two, despite buys on both? Uh, yeah, look, I, I think in the near term, uh, Lyft is probably our preferred name here over, say, the next couple of quarters. Uh, we struggle to find a stock in our coverage universe of, of, of U.S. Internet names that is uh, kind of so explicitly levered to an economic reopening and specifically one in the U.S., right? We think the U.S. is going to be the market that sees uh, vaccinations uh, at, at, at kind of the highest clip and therefore a reopening at the highest clip. And, and Lyft's business obviously is exclusively U.S. It's exclusively tied to ride sharing, which is tied to things like people going out to restaurants and, and, and seeing friends and, and, and going back to work in some capacity. So, so near-term Lyft uh, is one that we think has got a lot of kind of gas behind it. Uh, longer term, uh, we think Uber is building a great business, a great large platform. Uh, I think you know the near term is a little bit, um, a little bit more maybe uh, nuanced and, and potentially complicated for Uber. Do you, do you think the comps are going to be very hard for the food delivery business throughout the rest of the year? Yeah. So you know the, the comp here in the first quarter, the first quarter numbers for delivery we think are going to be uh, great. Uh, we expect that uh, the comps will kind of come back down to earth a little bit uh, starting in the second quarter. We we still think you're going to see growth in delivery. Uh, part of that is is going to be inorganic. You know they acquired Postmates at the end of last year. Uh, they acquired uh, Drizzly. Uh, that deal closed in February. Uh, so you're you're going to see kind of a, a little bit of a normalization there. Uh, we are, are urging investors not to get too focused on kind of the near-term comps for, for delivery. Uh, you know, we think that uh, the pandemic was just this spectac spectacular opportunity for, for Uber Eats to um, acquire new customers uh, super, super efficiently. Uh, and, you know, we think that's a, a base of new customer acquisition that's going to really benefit them in the years to come, uh, even if, you know, over the next couple of quarters or the next few quarters, I should say, you're going you're to have tough comps. Mm. Tom, meantime, I mean, these names plus DoorDash took a real drubbing yesterday after you had a report out of Reuters saying that the U.S. Labor Secretary says gig workers should be classified as employees. He said, quote, these companies are making profits and revenue, and I'm not going to begrudge anyone for that because that's what we are about in America, but we also want to make sure that success trickles down to the worker. Here's the kicker. They're not actually profitable companies. So what happens if this proceeds? Yeah, so regulatory risk, uh, increased regulation is by far and away, we think, uh, risk, investment risk number one for, for both Uber, Lyft, uh, and DoorDash. Uh, you know, this week, uh, labor classification is, is kind of the hot topic, and that's been an important topic, uh, you know, over the last, uh, you know, several years, really. Um, you know, we think online food delivery uh, could be kind of a target of regulators also going forward. You've got a lot of cities that during the pandemic instituted commission caps. Uh, there's some question about whether some of those commission caps could uh, prove permanent. Uh, you know, for example, here in, in New York City, where I live uh, close by to, you know, the, the mayoral candidate frontrunner, Andrew Yang, is calling for uh, making the commission caps instituted in New York during the pandemic permanent. He's also calling for the, you know, the food delivery platforms to try and uh, to have to uh, share data on customers uh, uh, with the partner restaurants, uh, which you know could potentially cause some of the restaurants to uh, you know maybe take that data and 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 churn off. So, uh, you know, labor classification is an issue. I don't I don't exactly know what the labor secretary can kind of unilaterally do to to force reclassification of drivers uh, as employees, uh, but certainly um, you know if he's really focused on this, it could spur a series of you know probes and investigations, which is just going to I think, uh, shed more light and, and more focus on this issue and, and could, uh, you know, result in, in more litigation, more lawsuits uh, against these companies. Tom, Lyft uh, deciding to sell its autonomous unit or Uber buying Drizzly, which is a better deal for you? Uh, you know, I, I think it, it probably depends on your, on your time horizon. Uh, I think, uh, you know, near term, the decision for Lyft to... Um, uh, to sell its AV unit to that uh, unit of Toyota, it's going to have near-term benefits and it's going to have long-term benefits. I think, you know, near-term, what it does is uh, it, it increases Lyft's flexibility. It gives them extra dry powder, if you will. They're going to save, you know, $100 million in uh, annual uh, operating expenses as a result of offloading that unit. Uh, that's money that they can use to reinvest in the recovery, uh, make sure that they, you know, uh, uh, kind of try and win the recovery, I think, is really what both, sort of both of these companies are doing. So, uh, there'll be a near-term benefit uh, to the P&L. It'll give uh, Lyft some dry powder. 
Uh, longer term, you know, there's a question as to whether or not, um, you know, it would be better for a ride sharing platform to have its own proprietary mm. uh, autonomous uh, driving technology, or if a more partnership driven approach uh, is, is, is the best way. Um, by, by contrast, you know, the Drizzly deal, I think, was a great deal, too. Uh, more of a long-term deal, uh, long-term kind of uh, benefit to Uber. Uh, but Uber is really just trying to build uh, almost the equivalent of like a super app uh, here in the U.S. We don't really have those uh, the way they do in, in, in Asia. But, uh, you know, Uber is trying to tack on adjacent offerings like, like alcohol, like grocery, like pharmacy. Uh, and, you know, I think Drizzly is an interesting step uh, in that evolution of the company. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.